Hi everyone, I'm just back from Scotland, um, mainly uh, doing a bit of uh, climbing around in the mountains, but the camera was with me. And looking at some of the photographs, and now that I'm back on the computer, I can see that I'm starting to get some dust spots appearing uh, on my sensor in the camera itself. And that can be quite frustrating because you end up with the same little sort of blobs um, on your, your photograph uh, when you're looking at it. And if you've got a lot of photographs, whilst you can remove those in post, and I'll show you how to do that too, it can become quite frustrating. And ultimately we don't want those spots on the sensor. It happens very often um, when we're out in the field, out in wild places, we're changing lenses, little bits of dust and muck do get onto the sensor. So it's quite an important skill for a photographer to know how to clean these sensors. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways of doing that. So hopping into Lightroom now, um, here's an image uh, from last week in Scotland. And uh, you can probably see straight away in the clouds, we've got some really horrible uh, dust spots too there. There is one actually over here as well, um, in a, a little bit closer. Uh, there may well be some in the lower part of the image, but it's such a sort of disruptive uh, kind of pattern. Even in the snow, it's quite hard to see, but these ones are, are pretty obvious. So there's a great little feature in Lightroom. If we go on this um, little sticky plaster type symbol, and then down here at the bottom, we've got a checkbox for visualized spots. And we can change the sensitivity around to suit, but uh, we, we can definitely, if I really ramp that up, um, we can definitely see our two offending articles to start with. There's another one down here. There could be others down here, but as you can see, the pattern is so disruptive. It's very, very hard to tell what's a dust spot and what's just detail um, in the image itself. Uh, there is a way to um, deal with this in post so I can recover this image using this sticky plaster. I can set my little, uh, little round healing tool to about the same size as the dust spot and simply click on the dust spot. Click on that one too. Find that one, click on it. You can press enter to confirm those changes and you can see it's completely disappeared. That image uh, is recovered but I don't want to have to be doing that with every, Im every image that I ever take. So I do want to clean the sensor properly, uh, which is what we're going to do now. In order to find out um, where my dust spots may be, I'm going to, uh, I've got a 20 mil lens on here, but if you had a zoom lens, you might go to quite wide. You want all the sensor kind of included. Um, you can use a, uh, a, like a white board or um, a white desktop. I'm actually going to use a computer screen so I've just got a, a kind of white screen up here um, and I don't know whether you can see but I have got blemishes on the screen itself so um, I've got a little knack to get around that too. I'm going to put the camera into manual and I've put the aperture onto its smallest aperture so it's f22 in this particular case. Um, I'm going to uh, switch the camera on that would be helpful. So I've gone into manual mode and I've gone to an aperture of f22, which is the smallest aperture that this uh, camera can cope with. I'm going to put the ISO in something reasonably low. So I've got, got um, uh, 100 there. I'm going to put the focus on infinity. Then I'm going to adjust the shutter speed until my little histogram is peaking just over to the right, just slightly off screen. And then when I take my picture, I'm going to move around the screen and the dust spots will move with, because they're inside the camera, whereas any scratches or blobs that are on the screen uh, won't be there. That will give me a good sense when I put it up on the computer screen of where the dust spots might be. The first method, um, and uh, I would have this in the field, is just using a little air blower. So I've got this uh, this little one here, they're, they're super cheap. Um, I would avoid using any kind of aerosol one, I think that could um, potentially do damage 
to the inner workings of uh, of your camera. So just a little air blower like this is uh, is quite sufficient for the first method. Um, it's worth noting that a lot of cameras have self-cleaning of their sensors and all that's doing is kind of vibrating the sensor at the back. Um, so I have done that first and that hasn't shifted them. So if it was a tiny little speck of dust, it might come off with that. So we need something a little bit more uh, manual. So I'm gonna, I am gonna take the lens off. This, uh, this scares a lot of people, this bit. Um, but I'm gonna try and minimize the amount of time um, that that's open. I note that I'm keeping the sensor angle down. And uh, all I do without touching the sensor, I just get the nozzle fairly close and just give it a good few puffs. One of the reasons that I'm angling it down, I actually saw a chunk of dust come off there. That was quite good. Don't often see that. One of the reasons that I'm angling it down is uh, just as just happened just then actually, as the air blows the dust off, obviously with gravity it will fall out rather than going back on the lens. So it might be, and I can actually see some on the lens as well. So I'm just going to pop that there for a moment, do the same with the lens. It might be that that's sufficient if it's just little bits of dust, particularly if you've been in a gritty environment, that might be enough to shift. So I take a test shot again and see whether that's cleared it. So looking at my test image here, um, what I can do is I've put it into develop and I'm going to click on the little sticky plaster symbol. And then if I press the um, visualize spots checkbox and I'll ramp up that sensitivity, we can see all these bits and muck. So we don't want to worry about all this um, kind of uh, shading at the top. I think that's from the screen, but we can see our offending dust spots up here at the top. There's another couple of little ones here. What we couldn't see before in the landscape image are all these little ones down at the lower part of the sensor because they were hidden in the snow and the heather. So we want to deal with all of those. And that's where a good old clean of the sensor comes in. If the um, little puffer method hasn't been sufficient, I may then need to move on to using sensor wipes. And this is where people get really nervous, but it's not, really not as bad um, as you might think. Again, I can remove my lens, gonna switch off, remove my lens. This is with a, a mirrorless camera. Um, if I was with an SLR, I'd need to lock up my mirror so that I was able to get at the sensor. Give you a little peek of the sensor under there. And um, if I'm using uh, little um, V-swabs like this, there's a solution that you can drop on them. But the method that I quite like is the pre-solutioned um, little uh, V-swabs followed up by one of the dry ones to kind of mop up afterwards. I feel that, that that works best for me, but there are a few different ways of doing it. I'm just gonna have to drop my camera up to open it though. So the reason this makes um, folk nervous, understandably, is because you are making contact with your sensor itself, which is quite a, quite a nerve wracking thing to do. But it's worth bearing in mind that there is a glass plate in front of it. Um, and uh, as long as you don't put down too much pressure, um, you're not going, to, not going to damage it. So do be cautious. Do you need a little bit of pressure to clean it? not so much pressure that potentially you could damage particularly the stabilization I don't think you'd be able to see it but the sensor is moving around a little bit as I wipe it and that is the image stabilization so I'm just applying a little bit of pressure but not too much force and backwards and forwards right up to the corners of the sensor so I get a nice clean now, this is why I like the two swab method, because that first swab, and the same would happen if we had drops, um, or has happened to me at least, is we end up with little droplets on the sensor, which obviously is not good on a number of levels. So this is where I come to my dry sensor, sorry, dry V-swab. And um, this is a, a full frame width which is really nice because it means I can wipe it down the entire sensor in one go. I'm going to flip it over and I am applying a bit of pressure but again not so much pressure that I might damage anything. Flip it again. I quite like to always go the same way so I know where I'm up to. 
that's looking pretty nice to me. So I'm going to quickly pop the lens back on it before any bad stuff can happen. And then I'll take another test shot. We'll have a look at it on the screen, see if it's successful. If not, I may have to repeat that process um, until I've got a squeaky clean sensor. So this is my latest test image um, post cleaning. So let's have a look. We're in the little uh, sticky plaster heel tool and the visualized spots uh, I've got a black screen at the moment. Let's ramp up that sensitivity and see whether anything appears. No, so that's on maximum sensitivity. What that should mean, hopefully, is we've got a nice squeaky clean sensor now, at least for the time being, until the next time I change my lens outdoors, um, and we're good to go again.